This data, already in the form of a contingency table, shows the number of people, male and female, who have shown degrees of improvement following bacteriophage treatment, either no improvement, some improvement, good or excellent improvement. With Minitab, we can perform a chi-squared analysis directly from summarized data in a contingency table of this form. So we go to Stat, Tables, we can choose Chi-squared test for association, in which we have the options of either raw data or summarized data in a two-way table. So summarized data, we need to enter all the columns containing the table, so we highlight all of these columns and select we can use the default settings under statistics, which will perform the chi-squared test and display the counts in each cell with the expected cell counts and run the analysis. The results appear in the session window. The results represent the contingency table and for each cell, they give the observed values and the expected values. It then calculates the chi-squared value, and then with the degrees of freedom 3, which is equal to the number of columns minus 1 times the number of rows minus 1, 4 minus 1 times 2 minus 1 is 3. It then calculates the p-value for the hypothesis test, and with a p-value of 0.135, there is no evidence to reject the null hypothesis that there was no association between the improvement and the gender of the patient. In this next example, the data here shows the yes-no answers to two questions, Q1 and Q2, in a forensic questionnaire. The answers are given by 66 respondents divided into two groups, G1 and G2. We will use this data to illustrate the use of cross-tabulation to obtain the contingency table and then to derive various chi-squared statistics. So we go to Stat, Tables, Cross-tabulation and Chi-squared. In this case we have raw data but we could also use this analysis if we had the data summarized in a two-way table as we had in the earlier example. But using the raw data default, we will use Q1 to define the rows of the contingency table and Q2 to define the columns. At this point, we have no layers. Clicking on chi-squared, we will request the chi-squared test and we wish the statistics to display the expected cell counts in each cell of the contingency table. And then under other statistics, as we have a simple 2x2 two two contingency table, we will select Fisher's exact test and McNamara's test. And we can also click the other measures of association, Kramer's V, Kappa, Lambda and Tower, and concordance and correlation calculations and click OK. We can then run the analysis and as before the results appear in the session window. We see that the cross tabulation has calculated the cell numbers within the 2x2 two two contingency table. So for example with the rows defined by the answers to question 1 and the columns to the answers to question 2. So for example 24 people answered no to both question 1 and question 2. So we have the observed values, the 24, 19, 7 and 16, and the calculated expected values for each cell. The analysis then calculates the chi-squared value, degrees of freedom 1 for the 2x2 two two table, and then the calculated p-value. And the p-value of 0 0.049 at first sight appears to be significant, being less than 0 
but because we only have a 2 by 2 table, the direct chi-squared value can be somewhat unreliable and it would be necessary to use the Yates correction or, as we have here, Fisher's exact test for this particular calculation, which gives a p-value of 0 0.07, which is suggesting that it is safer to accept the Fisher's value and to conclude that there is not enough evidence for this data to reject the null hypothesis. And we should say that there is no significant association between the answers to questions Q2 and Q1 for this overall data set. Looking at the other data available in these results, we can see that Minitab 17 has actually performed McNamara's test which tests whether there is a significant difference between the off-diagonal elements of the contingency table. And in this case, it calculates a significant p-value of 0 0.029. So if we return to the contingency table, McNamara's test has tested for a significant difference between the 7 and the 19 and it is concluded that there is a significant difference between these two values, in that significantly more people going from Q1 to Q2 have changed from a no to a yes than have changed from a yes to a no. We also have other statistical results. We have Kramer's V, but in Minitab presented as Kramer's V squared, of 0.059 to three decimal places, our values for kappa, the correlation coefficients of Pearson's and Spearman's, and values of lambda calculated choosing Q1 or Q2 as a dependent variable, and also the various measurements of concordance, Sommer's D, Goodman and Kruskal's gamma, and Kendall's tau B. We can now further refine the analysis of this data by considering the two groups within the overall data set. So we go to STAT, cross tabulation and chi-squared again, only this time we will use groups to identify two layers within the data and we will run the analysis again. Minitab has now repeated the analysis separately for the data from each group. So for group G1, it identifies that were 36 respondents in group G1, and again calculates a chi-squared value and a p-value. But now, we're noting we've got cells with expected counts less than 5, but in any case, we see that Fisher's exact test with a p-value of 0.219 says that we should not, in any case, reject the null hypothesis. We can now continue by looking at the results of McNamara's test, which gives a very significant p-value of less than 0 0.0005. And this is saying that there is a very significant difference between the off-diagonal elements of this particular group, G1, in that 16 people who said no to question 1 reply yes to question 2, but only one person changes their mind in the other direction, changing it from a yes to Q1 to a no for Q2. So within group G1, there is a significant factor here in the way in which people have changed their mind. If we then continue by looking at group G2, we have the separate chi-squared calculation and we see that we have 30 respondents in group G2 and although Pearson's chi-squared appears to give a significant result for association between Q1 and Q2, with a p-value of 0 0.029, we should perhaps take caution in that this is only a 2 by 2 table and the Fisher's exact test gives a p-value of greater than 0 0.05.
so we perhaps should still accept the null hypothesis that there is no significant association between the results of Q1 and Q2. But again, if we look at the results of McNamara's test for group G2, we see that it gives a p-value of 0.5. There is no evidence that there is a significant difference in the way in which people change their minds, in that three people change their minds from a no to a yes, and six people from a yes to a no. So overall, we can say that chi-squared has found no significant associations between Q1 and Q2 in the overall data or in the groups. But using McNamara's test, we see that for group G1, there is a significant difference in the way in which members of group G1 change their minds between Q1 and Q2. But for group G2, there was no significant difference.